So obviously the title is a joke. Uh, there's no secret arcane knowledge that I'm going to show you today, but I am going to go in depth into some of the less explored adjustments that you can make on the DPO. Uh, this is not VCO pitch calibration. That's sort of its own animal. Uh, I'm just going to be going over some of the adjustments you can make in order to clean up the sine wave on your DPO, as well as adjust the final output, the wave folded output. Um, as I've moved mine around in racks and over the years, you might find that your sine wave becomes more of a triangle wave, or you've got more square wave-ish waveforms than you should, or your wave folder isn't acting like you expected. Uh, there are trimmers that we're gonna go over, and there is a manual that exists, an older version of the DPO manual, that uh, has calibration instructions in the back of it. Now, the latest version of this, the, the most recent and available DPO manual on the website does not have this information. And I can only assume that people that didn't have access to the right tools or knowledge were faffing about with their DPOs too much and then they would have to get sent in. So they probably just removed that information for the sake of their own repair shop. Having said that, if you don't feel comfortable with electronics or working with trimmers or you have a scope or any kind of meter, uh, just don't do it. You know, send, send your DPO in to make noise for calibration. I did several years back, it was like 40 bucks, and then they'll send it back, it'll be great. And these instructions are out there. I'll have links to the website where you can still get the old manual. But having said that, just don't do it. Stop watching this video, don't mess around with it, and just enjoy your DPO. All right, now that the narcs are gone, uh, let's get into it. So if we look at our DPO, what I did is I kind of backed it out of the system here. It's just sort of leaning forward. And what I want to point out, where's my point and screwdriver? What I want to point out on the top, there's four trimmers along the top. And these are called out in the manual. I'll bring that up here. And what these trimmers do is uh, adjust the sine wave output for both VCOA and VCOB. So in the manual, and I'll throw that up here, you can see that one is the sine shape adjustment and one is the amplitude adjustment. There's another fifth trimmer, the fifth beetle of trimmers. Can I get in there? Yeah, right there on the side. And that is the gain adjustment for the fold circuit. So you can see that. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So what I'm gonna be doing is adjusting those uh, per the manual, and then we'll see if we can get our shapes a little bit cleaner. So this is the sine wave output on VCOA. Now, I don't know about you, but that does not look very signy. So what I'm gonna do is start adjusting things from left to right. So the manual calls out that the first trimmer to the left, there's two over VCOA and two over VCOB. And the first trimmer to the left is the input to the sine shaper. So the sine wave is the most natural wave in nature. Uh, it's very unnatural and hard to do in electronics, or at least it's not as straightforward as like a square wave, which is just a triangle wave, which is fed into a comparator. Um, in this case, uh, you have to get it through a wave shaping function. So what I'm gonna do is adjust trimmer 1A. So I'm turning it clockwise or up, and you can see that as, this is its highest setting. It has a sort of fold over. If I turn it all the way down, we're back in Trianglesville, and that's no good. So what we wanna do is adjust that so it looks kind of signy. So that's too triangly, that's too fold overy. This is a pretty good looking sine wave. I like it. Uh, the next adjustment is amplitude, which is fairly straightforward. You can see I've got two cursors, uh, one up here and one down here. Uh, this delta here tells you the voltage. Uh, you're supposed to shoot for about 10.5 volts peak to peak. So peak to peak, not peak, not RMS, peak to peak. So what I'm gonna do is adjust that until it fits within that little envelope. And there we go, VCOA, pretty easy stuff. Uh, just for fun, let's compare that to the, well, let's turn on the triangle wave that I have in channel one. Uh, like I said, it's a triangle core VCO, so that's fed into the wave shaper that creates the sine shape. Um, also, there is the sawtooth output, which is not the most sawtoothy, but that's okay. It's got its own character. It has that little irregularity in the middle of it right there. Uh, but that's VCOA. VCOB, quite a bit more to work on. A lot more tuning because of that wave folder circuit. So now I'm going to unplug this. So I'm going to plug. Uh, okay, 
So once again, this is our sine wave output from VCOB. That's not right. So same process, adjust trimmer number one. I'm turning this clockwise, 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 anti-clockwise, anti-counterclockwise, and there we go. Now I'm gonna adjust the amplitude. That's looking good. Amplitude matters, especially on VCOA, because that is the signal that gets fed through the uh, modulation index. So you want to make sure that those amplitudes are correct. So that is our sine output. So that looks good. Now I'm also going to monitor the square wave output. And we're going to turn on channel 1. So there's our square wave. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock my trigger on channel one because once I start wave folding the trigger likes to go all over the place. So I'm going to move my channel two or the blue portion over to the final output. And so this is our wave folded output and this is where we need to do some adjusticating. So if I were to, the manual says uh, to set uh, the shape control first all the way up the symmetry into the center and then move the wave folder to about 25 percent until you see a sine wave is shape so this is about 25 percent and then if we move the shape control now we're at noon now i'm a little bit closer to one o'clock but that's our spike wave output and then down here we should get back to sine wavy okay close enough for government work all right so that is our sine wave output uh, probably does need a little bit of gain adjustment but what it says to do is to start adjusting the um, wave folder control until you see five folds so let's do that we should see five folds when we get all the way to the top so we're going to do this we got one fold we've got two folds We've got three folds. We've got four folds. And the fifth one. And once you get to this fifth one, you're going to see that center section of the wave sort of start to pooch out like that. Now, this is with it all the way up. We've got five folds. We didn't make it to Avenge sevenfold. Now, I'm going to reach around here and get to the side trimmer. And this is what happens if I start adjusting that. You can increase the width of that center one, which should sort of thin it out a little bit. And if I, now I'm turning it clockwise and things get all sorts of not great. So you can see there's only a couple folds there. What you want to see is at least this wave shape. And then you can adjust it a little bit higher if that's more of the timbre you're looking for. I'm going to leave mine right about there. But we can see one, two, three, four, five folds. Everything is peachy there. So now I'm going to lower this all the way back down. Oh, just for fun, this is what happens with, we've got the fold all the way up and now I'm turning the shape control. Now the spike wave is at noon. Now I'm going to the spiky triangle wave. I'm gonna go back to sign. This is what happens when you play with the symmetry. Now I'm going clockwise. Now I'm going counterclockwise. That's the effect that symmetry has on that. Now I'm going to reduce my fold amount until I get back to something kind of signy. And there you go. And of course, if you move the wave folder control all the way down, uh, there's no output. Uh, so that is that. Uh, we'll go back. Let's take a look at the sine wave. Now there are two other super secret mystery outputs for VCOB. So in the normal module, you've got the uh, sine output, the square wave output, and the final output. But there also is ability to get to the triangle core um, as well as the um, spike wave output, but that's locked behind a paid DLC. You need the RixMix module or a control mod file, which gives you access to those uh, pretty easily. So I'm just gonna plug that in here. So this is the raw triangle output from VCOB. And this is the spike wave output. It's pretty high positive voltage. My theory is that the uh, spike wave output is the 
a square wave fed through a differentiation circuit. So an integrator circuit gives you, it slows down the signal, area under the curve. Differentiator circuit, rate of change. And you can see with a square wave, the rate of change is greatest uh, at the step functions. Uh, and that's where you see the spikes in the waveform. But that's, I don't know the circuit inside and out, but that's just my theory. Uh, so there you go. That is the super secret DPO adjustment. Um, again, if you're not comfortable, if you don't feel like you're up to the task, just send it in to make noise. You know, they'll keep it for a couple of days or a week or something, pay them 40 bucks, have them do the adjustments. But that is all you need to know.